Hi, this is Mr. Conley. I'm the principal at Algonquin Middle School. This video is meant to be a replacement for our in-person sixth grade orientation. This video will teach you everything you need to know about Algonquin. After you watch this video, you will have a task to do as a family, and that is to pick your path for exploratories. You can choose either choir, band, or have a variety of exploratories. I'll explain that all in this video, so sit back and enjoy. Our mission here at Algonquin is to offer a positive and safe environment for all students to obtain knowledge and skills to achieve success. We promote something that we call the three R's for success being respectful, being responsible, and being ready. Students will hear these phrases over and over and over in all aspects of Algonquin Middle School. A couple of general things about Algonquin. We have about 550 students in a normal year. I think we're slated to get a little less in 2021-22. Uh, we service grades six, seven, and eight. Our feeder elementary schools are Clinton Valley Elementary, Ottawa and Erie Elementary, and we also take in a good percentage of school of choice students. We are at full school Title I, which means we get additional dollars from the government to do things like programs and different uh, activities throughout the year. We uh, do provide sports for seventh and eighth graders, and we have lots of extracurricular activities and groups that all students can get involved with. We have the only PTO at the middle level in Chippewa Valley Schools. And this summer, we are going to um, go through several renovation projects. Our office, we're getting new lockers for students. Lots of classrooms are getting redone. So uh, if you happen to come by Algonquin in the summer months, you're probably going to see a lot of construction vehicles. A couple of notes about our staff. We have 30 full-time classroom teachers. We have two counselors, and the counselors are here to help students with any issues they might have. And they also take the lead role in making sure all students have proper schedules and are put in the right classes. We have a psychologist, a speech pathologist. We have two teacher consultants who help students in and out of the classroom. We have four paraeducators that work in and out of classrooms helping uh, students and teachers. We have a bilingual student, uh, I'm sorry, a bilingual tutor. Uh, we have a media clerk who takes care of all of our uh, literature needs and our technology needs. We have two office staff members. We have a health aide to service any medical issues that the students may have. We have three custodians. We have eight lunchroom staff that takes care of all of our food and uh, monitoring of students. We have a police liaison liaison officer that services our building. That's true for all of the middle schools in Chippewa Valley. Uh, we have an assistant principal and one principal. Chippewa Valley has uh, committed to once again um, running the virtual academy for all middle school students. As a reminder for how this works, if your family decides that choosing the virtual academy is right for you, um, you will simply take all of your classes online using Chippewa Valley teachers as uh, the instructors. Um, CVVA students can still participate in activities such as sports or extracurricular things going on at the home school. Uh, if you feel that the virtual academy is right for you and your family, then you can sign up and in the uh, Chippewa Valley Schools webpage. So our academic program here at the middle school and specifically for sixth grade looks like this. Uh, all students will have six class periods. That is four core classes. That's your math, uh, English language arts, your science and your social studies. And the two uh, other uh, time slots for classes are what we call our exploratories. So for sixth grade, the exploratories that we offer are Success 101. All sixth graders have this in the first quarter. This is like an introduction to all things middle school over a 10 week period. Uh, we have art, we have tech ed, we have gym, foreign culture, uh, foreign culture, the language changes by grade level in sixth grade, it is Spanish. We uh, have Lego robotics and a poetry class. We also provide band and choir. Now band and choir are a full year exploratory class. So this is one of the tasks that you guys have 
um, uh, on the same web page that you clicked on this video, there is a form that you can select your exploratory path. So let me explain in a little more detail. If you decide that band is the right choice for you, um, you will be in band all year. So it will take one of your exploratory classes all year long. Our, our year is broken up into four quarters. So one of your specials is, is taken all year long, which leaves four more slots for you to go through some of these other exploratory classes. Same thing with choir, it's a full year program and um, that means it would take uh, up an exploratory class all year long. If you decide that learning an instrument or performing uh, in choir is not for you, then you can simply choose the full rotation of exploratory classes. In that case, you would probably get assigned to each one of these exploratory classes at some point in the year. So a couple of things with band. Uh, there is another video on this web page to introduce you to band, but keep in mind, you do not need any experience with an instrument to be enrolled in band. Uh, Mr. Donnelly will teach you everything you need to know. It is um, very rewarding experience. I highly recommend band to anybody that wants to take it. And it's the same thing with choir. Choir is a full year. Miss Woodman will teach you everything you need to know. You don't need to be a great singer to be in the choir. Both of these programs uh, have, have wonderful activities associated with them all year long. So we highly recommend them to anybody who might be on the fence. Um, it, it would be a, a great choice for anyone. So um, once again, make sure you choose your exploratory path um, on the same website page that you watched this video. So here at Algonquin, we offer many extracurricular activities for our students. Um, I've broken them down on this page in several different categories, so let's go through them. We offer sports in seventh and eighth grade. The sports that we offer are football, which is co-ed. Uh, we offer girls volleyball, boys basketball, girls basketball, and track and field, which is also co-ed. Football and volleyball happen in the fall, basketball's through the winter, track and field is in the spring. We have some social clubs, Rainbow Club and the Anime Club. Both of these groups are, are wonderful outlets for uh, some of the students who need them. Um, we provide many leadership opportunities for our students. We have a thriving student council, which puts on many events all throughout the year. In eighth grade, students can qualify for the National Junior Honor Society. And we also have a program called WEB, which I'll describe later on in this video. It stands for Where Everyone Belongs, pairing eighth grade mentors with sixth grade students. We uh, participate in a couple academic competitions, one of which is Science Olympia. That's a full year club uh, open to all grade levels. We also participate in the District Lego Robotics Competition. Some of our uh, performance clubs, we have our Eagle Encore, which puts on a fantastic musical around the uh, musical and play around the holidays. Uh, we typically have uh, 50, 60 kids participating in that. Highly recommend that. Our band and choir, of course, put, put on many performances throughout the year. And we also have uh, a special group of band members called the Jazz Band, which puts on different concerts throughout the year. And we also have many intramural events um, that happen periodically. Uh, we have a, a yearly dodgeball tournament. We have things like ping pong clubs and art clubs. So um, we have lots of things for you guys to be involved with, and we highly recommend getting involved with as many as you can. Going along with our extracurricular activities, we have many traditional events that happen throughout the year, uh, one of which is our annual turkey trot. I think we're in the 30th year of the turkey trot. Um, we do a mile, a mile run through our neighborhoods and uh, the winning uh, groups of kids. Uh, actually go home with a turkey, which is pretty funny. We do a uh, week-long spirit week, which uh, culminates with an end of the week pep assembly where grade levels compete in physical challenges to see who is the winner of spirit week. We put on many dances throughout the year, which is a lot of fun. At the end of the year, we take a trip. The entire school goes to Metro Beach for students who qualify for that through good grades and behavior. We put on many charity fundraisers through our student uh, leadership groups, our uh, web events, uh, where everyone belongs. Our eighth graders put, put on many events for our sixth graders. We put on a yearly market day where students make 
goods from home, baked goods or, or other kind of things and sell them to their classmates. Uh, we do various field trips throughout the year depending on the grade level and we also have a yearly spelling bee. Our staff works very hard to recognize the wonderful achievements of all of our students and we recognize our students in many different ways. For one, we have um, a monthly student of the month award. Uh, students are awarded with a, a nice certificate and a donut breakfast. Um, we give awards for outstanding effort and we display these student names in our dis um, display cases located throughout the school. Kids get bags of candy to celebrate their achievements. Uh, we publish our honor roll. We give citizens citizenships awards at the end of the year. Uh, we put badges, magnetic badges, on all of the kids' lockers uh, with the more activities they do. So, for instance, if you're involved in sports or some of our leadership groups, you get a badge signifying that uh, you do participate in that, and that is a source of pride for all of our students. We have a thriving PBIS program where students can earn Eagle Honor tickets, and all of these tickets can be redeemed for uh, prizes and candy during our lunch period. Uh, students have a lot of fun with that. And um, we do host uh, completion ceremonies at the end of the year for all of our grade levels. The middle school start time is 7.58 a.m. We do serve breakfast every day in our cafeteria. Uh, our door, our front door is open at about 7.15, so uh, parents, if you drop your child off, you can get them here uh, anytime after 7.15. Um, if you're a busser, you'll have plenty of time to exit your bus, come into the building, and uh, take advantage of breakfast if that's something you want to do. School does end at 2.42 p.m. Unfortunately, we do not provide any after-school latchkey programs of any sort. We do expect students to get picked up immediately after school unless they're in an organized after-school activity. Here is a rundown of our daily schedule. You can see that uh, each of our class periods is roughly about an hour. Students have four to five minutes in between each class to run to their locker and get the supplies needed for the next class. Um, all of our lunch periods happen in fourth hour. So for sixth graders, you're actually going to go to your fourth hour. You're gonna stay in class for about a half hour. You're gonna leave fourth hour, go to lunch, and then you come right back to the same class and uh, finish up fourth hour and then on to fifth and sixth. Again, school gets out at 2.42. So I mentioned that we serve breakfast and of course we also serve lunch. Lunch is a little different in middle school than it is in elementary. Students have more choice for their lunches. So um, I think typically in elementary you only you can you can get the hot lunch or or and that's it but we do have many items available daily if uh, the menu uh, if the hot lunch menu isn't something you want you can choose other hot food we do serve pizza daily we have hamburgers grilled cheese and chicken sandwiches that students can buy instead of the hot lunch we also sell like peanut butter and jelly and different snacks like chips and cookies that students can buy um, uh, we do not handle uh, cash at, at in our cafeterias. All the money needs to go onto that website, sendmoneytoschool.com. This is all the same as it was in elementary. Just now that, um, that kids are in middle school, they have more choice in what they get to eat. So everyone in sixth grade is starting at a new school. So all of the anxiety and excitement that comes along with starting at a new school is shared by literally every sixth grader here. So here's some helpful hints for middle school. Number one, try and meet someone new. Like I said, you're probably gonna know kids from your old elementary school, um, but we have several other schools that are now uh, coming to this place. So you're gonna know lots of new kids by the end of the first couple of days of school, which should be very exciting. Uh, be sure to smile and be friendly to others. Have a sense of humor. Try to laugh things off as much as you can. Uh, try and be open-minded and listen to others and always be positive and optimistic. 
You should always try not to make fun of other people. Sometimes that uh, uh, sometimes things that you think are funny are not funny to others. So it's just a, a safe bet not to make fun of other people in um, in a joking manner in, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, try to give yourself the gift of time. One of the things that we see students struggling with a lot is procrastination. They put off their homework. They put off projects to the very last day, and that gets them in trouble. So uh, jump on things as as quickly as you can and that's going to help you out in the long run. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Literally every adult in this building is here to help students and we expect you guys to ask uh, questions. Uh, be sure to get involved in as many extracurricular activities as you can. Uh, we believe that this really makes a, a well-rounded middle school experience. So uh, we work hard to offer a lot of these extracurricular things to, to our families and students and we hope you take advantage of them. And try to be optimistic and always think that the glass so attendance is very important um, in, in the middle school and, and the secondary level because um, number one, we have hourly classes. So maybe in elementary, you may uh, have missed uh, the first maybe hour or two of school, maybe you had a doctor appointment or you slept in or something like that. Um, in elementary, that elementary teacher can circle back and talk to you about maybe what you missed in those first hours. But in middle school, um, if you miss first hour, you're not going to be able to go back to that teacher because that teacher is now teaching their other classes. So uh, attendance is more important than ever. It's, it's important for you to get here to school on time every day. Um, parents, if you need to pull your child from school, feel free to send them in in the morning pull them from school for that orthodontist appointment and then bring them back. Um, there's no reason why students need to miss full days of school. Get them here as much as possible. Um, we do expect students to arrive to class on time every hour. You have plenty of time uh, between uh, the classes to get to your locker, get a drink of water, go to the bathroom. That's there's There's five minutes. Five minutes is a long time to spend between classes. You can get whatever you need to get done. You can get done in that five minutes. We do expect you to be seated and ready when uh, each bell rings. So one of the biggest questions we get before school starts is what supplies does my child need? So uh, before I talk about supplies, let's first talk about something very exciting happening next year. And that is that every child in Chippewa Valley Schools is going to get their own laptop. Our district is moving to a one to one device experience for our kids. So that being said, this may influence what supplies your family may need for school. Um, teachers are going to be extensively trained about how to implement these laptops into their curriculums. Um, for some subjects, teachers may not utilize the laptops very much at all. In other subjects, those laptops may be needed all day, every day. So um, the laptops are going to come to you. Uh, we're going to check out laptops probably in the first week of school and um, uh, that laptop will be assigned uh, to the student all year long. They come in a protective case, so hopefully that keeps it safe. Um, so that that leads to the bigger question of what else will my child need uh, for school? Well, we're still going to recommend that your child has a folder for um, for real life papers and things like that uh, that they need to collect for each subject. Um, your child's going to need a backpack, probably a pencil case. Uh, a binder or a trapper keeper of some sort to keep all of these folders organized. So uh, those are the, the, the supplies that we're recommending now. But like I said, uh, with the implementation of one-to-one -one devices for all of our students and everybody getting a laptop, that, that's going to change school exponentially for everyone. So um, if you have any questions about that, um, about that laptop, uh, we're still sort of finalizing what those are going to look like and different procedures and rules for those. So hopefully before school starts, we're going to have some real clear expectations for these laptops. So as you know, uh, school for the 2021 year was impacted greatly by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, specifically with all of the safety protocols and the rules and the regulations that went into running schools. Um, obviously, we do not know what school is going to look like next year. 
Are masks going to be a thing? Is social distancing going to be a thing? We just, at this point, don't know. So um, I plan on communicating anything that our families need to know about safety protocols and whatever rules are going to be in place for next year. We'll do lots of communicating with that uh, prior to the school year. Um, and with that, we're just going to cross our fingers and hope for the best. So like we said, dismissal is at 2.42. Um, we do provide busing for almost all of our students. We highly recommend that if your student is assigned a bus, please uh, allow your student to get on that bus and go home that way. That's the most efficient way to get your kid home. Um, if you, uh, for some reason, need to drop off and pick up your child each day, uh, these red arrows show our driveways coming in and exiting. Uh, you should be advised that at the end of the day, typically uh, parents are parking along the front of the building along that curb. And usually we have so many parents picking up that traffic goes out into the subdivision. So it's very important that if you are picking up your child to move all the way up on that, on that driveway as much as you can so we can get as many cars inside our parking lot and not on the streets of the uh, surrounding subdivision. So as a general rule, we do not allow students to carry cell phones during the school day. Uh, it's fine uh, that your child wants to bring a phone to the building and they can store it in their locker, but it should not be on their person uh, during the day. We find that cell phones are a huge distraction. And uh, personally, I think kids probably just need a break from that phone for six and a half hours a day. And kids, I'm sorry to say that, but I know the parents appreciate that mindset. So um, keep in mind that we also understand how important these phones are to family communication. Um, I do instruct teachers uh, to confiscate any cell phones that are in class, uh, but my promise to you is that your child will always get their phone back at the end of the day because we know how important they are. Uh, along with that phone that they get back at the end of the day, they also may get a consequence such as a detention. I hope that doesn't happen. So we hope that everybody follows rules and uh, keeps that phone in their locker. Keep in mind, parents, uh, if you're worried about keeping uh, in communication with your child, we can reach your child within seconds that you call our school. Uh, we can reach them immediately. We know where every student is at all times. And also we have over 60 hardline telephones located all throughout the buildings that students can use if, um, if they need to contact home. We usually get a lot of questions about dress code as families are making decisions about what clothes to buy for the upcoming school year. Um, all we simply ask is that you just use common sense when you're, when you're buying clothes for the school year. Watch any offensive language or offensive imagery. Um, it seems to be a style right now are excessively torn jeans and we're having some issues there because uh, while the holes may be appropriate when, when people are standing around, when they uh, sit down in chairs, sometimes they reveal a, a little too much. So um, just keep in mind that, you know, this is uh, uh, an educational facility here and um, uh, just make some good common sense judgments uh, when you're buying clothes. Our uh, students and families are typically uh, worried about bullying in some way, shape, or form, uh, and frankly, so are we. Um, we really utilize a uh, priority response to any reports of bullying. We have lots of staff members here uh, for any kind of issues that may arrive during the school day. Uh, our counselors are great resources for students. And if uh, students are having any kind of social issues, our counselors uh, really take a lead role in, in helping guide students through that process and resolving any issues. Um, we do provide many ways that students can report issues to staff members, and we uh, talk about all of these various ways of reporting to students in the first couple days of school. Um, and, you know, it, in a general sense, I think that uh, uh, students and families need to understand how much social media complicates these reports of bullying. Um, you know, here at the building, we can really only control what happens within the walls of this school. Uh, things can fall apart quickly when social media comes into play and kids are um, you know, posting inappropriate things uh, late into the night. Um, and then that sort of prompts us to have to work harder the next day. So um, 
you know, I think it's important for families to stay on top of social media, especially if there is some sort of drama going on uh, with their child. And uh, we also talk to students a lot about the difference between mean comments and bullying. Both we can address here at school, but these are vastly different things. Bullying is repeated behavior over time and uh, mean comments may only happen once. Um, doesn't make it any better, but it does change how we may deal with it uh, from a staff perspective. So our school is uh, constantly communicating important uh, announcements uh, and updates to our parents and our students. And so it is important that your um, email and phone numbers are up to date with our, our office. Um, primarily, we will communicate broad messages through email first. So make sure that you have an email that you are checking often on file um, with our office. We also use phone, obviously, to call uh, parents. We also shoot out uh, mass text messages too. So so make sure those two things are updated with our office. Um, many of our teachers in the building for groups in their classes utilize the Remind app. So I, we recommend you download that and get ready for teachers to give you that information. Um, and uh, with our one-to-one -one technology, everybody getting laptops, we expect that Schoology will still play a big role in all of the students' classes. So we expect students to stay up on Schoology and all students have a school email and we expect students to be checking that regularly also. So prior to the start of the school year, we offer two um, events that take place prior to the first day of school for all students. Um, Eagle check-in is, is open to all students. This is where students get their schedule, their yearly schedule, and all students com can come into the building. They can walk around to all the classes. Uh, many of our teachers work this event, so they can most likely meet their teachers for the first time. Uh, they can um, uh, get a good understanding of where all of their classes are, so um, that, that helps uh, relieve anxiety for the first day of school. Um, we also do our school picture and students can get their ID at, on Eagle check-in day. Um, students get their locker combination and sixth graders especially can practice that locker com. We have lots of staff members that are here to help you learn that locker com and that's a great way to uh, get that down before the first day of school. Um, for parents, uh, Eagle check-in is also a time where we need you guys to fill out uh, all of the important forms that, that we need uh, for all of our records. And if your child chooses band, uh, we also do instrument fittings. This is where uh, the students try out different instruments and they figure out which one works best for them. For sixth graders only, we also do a, a special day called Web Day. Web stands for where everyone belongs. And on this day, we bring in all of the sixth graders and we have eighth grade leaders or mentors who work kids through different team building activities. Um, this is a great opportunity for sixth graders to meet their new classmates and they get to know the building. This is a day, like I said, only for sixth graders, um, just a, like an orientation day. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun, highly recommend it. Um, the dates for Eagle Check-In and Web Day have not been established yet. We're again, waiting to see what exactly are the COVID protocols that we need to do next year. So we're hoping both of these events are going to go off um, and we'll be communicating those dates out um, in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it answered some of the questions you may have about middle school. Um, I plan on going around to all of the elementary schools, Clinton Valley, Ottawa, and Erie to go talk to all of the fifth graders to answer any questions they may have. Uh, I will be around to those schools here in the next uh, upcoming days. Keep in mind that uh, go back to the webpage where you clicked on this video and there is a form there to pick your uh, exploratory path, either band, which is a full year class, choir, which is a full year class, or uh, the full rotation of exploratories. Remember that if you do pick band or choir, you will still get some of the exploratories, just not all of them. So um, I look forward to meeting all of you guys in person, and I hope that you are as excited as we are to be an eagle here at Algonquin Middle School.